In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my top 10 players from the 2008 NHL Draft. I had this series going where I was ranking picks and doing top 10s from drafts before the draft and up until it, and I decided to stop after it, but now that there isn't really anything going on, I decided to keep it going, and we're going to keep looking back at previous NHL Drafts, so let's get right into the video. Here's a look at how the original top 10 went in the 2008 draft. Steven Stamkos went first to the Lightning, Drew Daddy went second to the Los Angeles Kings, Zach Bogosian went third to the Atlanta Thrashers, Petrangelo fourth to the St. Louis Blues, Luke Shen went fifth to the Maple Leafs, Nikita Filatov went sixth to the Columbus Blue Jackets, Colin Wilson went seventh to the Predators, Mikhail Bodker went eighth to the Arizona Coyotes at the time it was Phoenix, Josh Bailey went ninth to the New York Islanders, and Cody Hodgson went tenth to the Vancouver Canucks. Starting the list off at number 10 is Josh Bailey of the New York Islanders, and I probably would have had him ahead of some players on this list, but I think Bailey's stats are kind of inflated from playing with John Tavares throughout the majority of his career so far. That's not taking anything away from Josh Bailey, I still think he's a fantastic NHL player, he's had a great career, and he's still a good player to this day. I'm just not sure his stats would be as good as they are if he didn't play with John Tavares, and we're really going to see how good of a player Josh Bailey is next season with John Tavares having left the New York Islanders and Josh Bailey really being probably the number one option on that team behind Matthew Barzell so it's going to be interesting to see how he plays with Otaveras. In 715 games so far throughout the course of his career he has 124 goals and 253 assists for 377 points and in 22 playoff games he has 4 goals and 7 assists for 11 points. Now I don't really see those playoff games rising up from 22 anytime soon as I don't see the New York Islanders as a playoff team for a couple more years so it's going to be interesting to see how guys like Anders Lee and Josh Bailey play there without John Tavares but all in all Josh Bailey has had a pretty solid NHL career so far. At number 9 is Adam Henrique. He was drafted by the New Jersey Devils in the third round, 82nd overall. He's currently playing for the Anaheim Ducks, but his career with the Devils was very, very solid. He's played in 512 NHL games so far and had 142 goals and 151 assists for 293 points. And in 28 playoff games, he has 5 goals and 8 assists for 13 points. And Adam Henrique, you may remember him if you're a Devils fan as the guy who scored the overtime winner in the conference finals to send you to your Stanley Cup final. He really just was a very reliable player throughout the course of his career with the New Jersey Devils. He just signed that big extension with the Anaheim Ducks. I'm kind of iffy about that contract, but he still is a really solid guy. A second line center who is very reliable in my opinion. And I have him above of Josh Bailey just because I think he brings a little bit more to your team. And I don't really think he needs to play with superstars to really contribute. And it's going to be interesting to see. I could be wrong about Josh Bailey and he could explode next year. But that's kind of just my opinion and that's why I have Adam Henrique at number 9. At number 8 is Jordan Eberle, originally drafted by the Edmonton Oilers with the first round 22nd overall pick. He's played in 588 games over the course of his career and has 190 goals and 251 assists for 441 points. He's only played in 13 playoff games that all came in his last season with the Oilers. Two assists in those playoff games for just two points. Pretty disappointing playoff run by Jordan Eberle. And I kind of think that was a catalyst to say, okay, we're going to trade this guy and bring in somebody else. And now we see him playing for the New York Islanders in that trade that sent Ryan Strom over to the Edmonton Oilers. And it's looking like that actually could have been a pretty good trade for the New York Islanders as Ryan Strom struggled in his first season with the Edmonton Oilers. But it's going to be interesting to see. But all in all, Jordan Eberle has had a really good career. Just the one thing he's lacking is playoff success. He's a very talented guy. You guys remember in his first NHL game where he scored that toe drag goal against the Calgary Flames. That was pretty unreal. A very talented guy, great offensive player, and I think he's a good, solid top six forward that can bring you about 60 to 65 points per season. Still right now, I think he's capable of that. It's going to be interesting to see how everyone plays on New York next year. I'm very curious to watch them play without John Tavares, but... Throughout the course of Jordan Eberle's career, he's just been really consistent and reliable as a guy who can give you good offensive numbers. Next up at number 7 is Derek Stepan of the New York Rangers. He was drafted in the second round, 51st overall by the Rangers, and they really did get their money's worth with this draft pick as throughout the course of his career with the Rangers, he's just been a really reliable guy. He's played in 597 games and has 142 goals and 274 assists for 416 points. And in 97 playoff games, he has 19 goals and 30 assists for 49 points. He was just a really good leader and a good all-around 
hometown guy for the New York Rangers throughout his time spent there. Obviously, he's currently playing for the Arizona Coyotes, and he is their number one center, but I'm not sure if I think Derek Stepan is best suited as a number one center. I think more as a number two center, he can really thrive in that situation. But obviously on a team like Arizona who isn't really a contending or maybe even not a playoff team at this point, obviously they're not going to have too many stars. So Derek Stepan is their number one guy and I certainly think he's capable of that. Stepan has just been a great leader and a great guy in the NHL throughout the course of his career and I think he has a lot more to give and that's why I have him at number 7. Next up at number 6 is John Carlson. He was drafted by the Washington Capitals with their 27th pick in the first round. He's played in 608 games and has 77 goals and 256 assists for 333 points. And in 100 playoff games, he has 18 goals and 37 assists for 55 points. Obviously, most of them playoff games coming in this previous playoffs where the Washington Capitals won the Stanley Cup. And I think John Carlson is a huge part of that team. And in the coming years, I definitely think he can climb up this list and pass a couple guys because in my opinion John Carlson had his really breakout season this year I think he was snubbed from being a nominee for the Norris Trophy he led all defensemen in points and that's just my opinion I think he's a huge part of the Washington Capitals organization I was happy to see them be able to re-sign him because if they lost him that really would have hurt but obviously he's still there and I think he's going to pass a lot of people on this list because I think he's just hitting his full potential now and we could see him as a Norris Trophy candidate next season I thought he should have been this year but I definitely think that John Carlson is going to be a fantastic defenseman for many more years to come and that's why I have him at number six on my list. At number five I have Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. In my opinion he's one of the most underrated defensemen in the NHL. I don't think he gets a lot of recognition just because PK Subban gets more of the spotlight on the Nashville Predators blue line but their captain Roman Yossi in my opinion is their most important defenseman. He was their second round 38th overall pick in the 2008 draft and what a steal that was for the Nashville Predators. Roman Yossi has played in 481 games and has 78 goals and 214 assists for 292 points and in 65 playoff games he has 8 goals and 20 assists for 28 points and Roman Yossi is a guy who can shut down the opposing team's best player. I thought he played really well for the few games he was at the World Championships for Switzerland. I just noticed him stand out a lot. But not only shutting down the other team's top players, he can chip in and give you some good offensive numbers. And he brings a heavy shot back there on that power play. And I think if he was really the number one defenseman on a team, or he, you could argue he is on Nashville, but many people think that's Subban. But if he was on a team where he is the bona fide number one defenseman, I think he would be getting a lot more recognition. But that's why I have Roman Yossi at number five, because he's just really had a awesome career so far. At number four is Alex Petrangelo of the St. Louis Blues and I forgot to mention this to you guys at the start of the video. I'm basing this list off of how good the players have been throughout the course of the career, not how good they are right now. So that's why this is kind of how it's shaping up. If I was doing how good they are right now, it would look a lot different. So if that changes anything for you guys, you can let me know. But Alex Petrangelo at number four, just been a really consistent and reliable guy for the St. Louis Blues since coming into the league. He was their fourth overall draft pick in 2008 and has 617 games played, 80 goals and 277 assists for 357 points and in 57 playoff games he has 4 goals and 22 assists for 26 points and this is a guy like Roman Yossi in my opinion who can shut down the other team's top guy but still give you some good offensive numbers. He has a crazy slap shot from the point on that power play and Alex Petrangelo doesn't get talked about all that much in my opinion. Obviously when St. Louis had Kevin Shattenkirk as well there was a lot of debate on who they would trade Shattenkirk or Petrangelo and ultimately I think they made the right decision trading Shattenkirk because Alex Petrangelo is their franchise defenseman and I still think he has a lot more good seasons left in the tank so that's why I have Petrangelo at number four. At number three is Drew Doughty of the Los Angeles Kings and Doughty really has just been so consistent throughout the course of his career. Constantly you hear his name thrown around when you're talking about who's going to win the Norris Trophy. This guy really is one of if not the best defenseman in the NHL. This draft really was really good for defensemen as you guys can probably tell from this list. Drew Doughty has played in 770 career games so far and has 102 goals and 320 assists for 422 points and an 80 four playoff games he has 16 goals and 35 assists for 51 points 
Doughty has won a Stanley Cup. He's one of the best trash talkers in the league in my opinion. Sometimes he crosses the line when it comes to how dirty a play is, but I think Drew Doughty is just the perfect leader for the Los Angeles Kings. He brings some really good offensive numbers. He's a good hitter. He shuts down the other team's top line. He's everything you want in a franchise defenseman and more, and he still has a lot left to give, and I think he's still going to be having his name thrown around in Norris Trophy talks for many more years, so that's why I have him at number three. At number two is Steven Stamkos of the Tampa Bay Lightning and I really had a hard time deciding who I would have at number two, Drew Doughty or Steven Stamkos. I mean Drew Doughty has a Stanley Cup, Stamkos doesn't but ultimately I decided to go with Stamkos at number two just because he is in my opinion one of the best goal scorers we've seen in a long time. I mean the guy has a 60 goal season for the Tampa Bay Lightning. His talent is undeniable. He was the first overall draft pick in the 2008 NHL draft. He's played in 660. 64 career games and has 348 goals and 320 assists for 668 points and being above a point per game having 600 plus games played is not an easy thing to do and when play players have that you know that they're an amazing offensive talent and in 66 playoff games Stamkos has 22 goals and 29 assists for 51 points he's done so much throughout the course of his career so far and the only thing missing from that resume right now is a Stanley Cup and with the team that the Tampa Bay Lightning has right now I definitely think we could see Stamkos hoisting the cup in the coming years just an amazing guy been really consistent and one of the best players in the NHL throughout the course of his career and that's why I have him at number two. And finally at number one is Eric Carlson of the Ottawa Senators. You could put up a good argument as to why Doughty, Stamkos, or Carlson should be number one on this list but I decided to go with Carlson just because I think he's a generational talent. We've never seen a guy like Carlson in this league or at least I haven't and I don't think we're going to see a guy like Carlson in the league for many more years. He was the 15th overall pick in the 2008 draft by the Ottawa Senators and that is a steal for a guy of his caliber. He's played in 627 games and has 126 goals and 392 assists for 518 points. And for a defenseman, those numbers are absolutely unbelievable. And in 48 playoff games, he has 6 goals and 31 assists for 37 points. And yes, he is in trade rumors right now for the Ottawa Senators, but ultimately, I think he is going to stay a Senator. He's a loyal guy. He's a great ambassador for the game, and he's just hard not to like. He literally drugged the Ottawa Senators to being one goal away from the Stanley Cup Final on one leg just last year, and now you're seeing the way he's treated. It kind of is sad to see, but it doesn't deny his talent. He's a generational defenseman, and that's why I have him at number one. Now for my favorite part of these videos, looking at a 2008 top 10 redraft, if we were to use my rankings, it's always interesting to see how the face and look of the league would change, and it would change in a big way, because this is a star-studded top 10. Eric Carlson first to the Tampa Bay Lightning, Steven Stamkos second to the Los Angeles Kings, Drew Doughty third to the Atlanta Thrashers, who would now be on the Winnipeg Jets, could you imagine that right now? Alex Petrangelo fourth to the St. Louis Blues, John Carlson fifth to the Toronto Maple Leafs, that would be huge for them as they would have their franchise defenseman, Roman Yossi sixth to the Columbus Blue Jackets, Derek Stepan seventh to the Predators, Eberle eighth to the Phoenix Coyotes at the time, now Arizona, Adam Henrique ninth to the New York Islanders, and Josh Bailey tenth to the Vancouver. Vancouver Canucks so the look of the league definitely would be a lot different if this was to happen so make sure you guys let me know what your top 10 would be down in the comments section obviously don't go hating if you don't agree with mine it's literally just my personal opinion so make sure you guys let me know yours so that is going to do it for this video I really hope you guys did enjoy and like I said previously if you don't agree don't hate just let me know yours it's pure speculation it's pure personal opinion so with that being said I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please make sure to drop a like on the video if you want to see more of these subscribe to the channel for daily NHL content and I'll see you guys all in the next video.